Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. We are two weeks into a brand new year, and I have to tell you, I love the new year. I feel like there's just so much hope and anticipation, and it's a fresh start, and I think most people feel that way. Um, Some of you, however, maybe are not feeling super pumped about it. Maybe you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I just overindulged in the holidays. You're feeling the physical repercussions. Maybe you've had some weight gain. Maybe you're more bloated. You're dealing with a lot of post-holiday food cravings. Wherever you're at, I wanna to talk to you about how, what to do when you've fallen off the wagon. So either this is gonna to apply to you right now or it's gonna to apply to you you know, sometime in the future, in a few weeks, in a few months, because the the guarantee in this journey of life, in your health journey, wherever you are at, is that it's not going to be, be a smooth path. It's not going to be smooth sailing all the time. And that is okay. <laughs> that is normal. But I want to teach you how to navigate all the ups and downs, all the bumps, all the awkward turns. Okay. So we're going to talk about that, what to do when you've fallen off the wagon. Now, At the time of this recording, I am preparing, well, I'm about to give a talk in a little over an hour to a group of family doctors. I do a lot of speaking on uh, management of obesity and weight and adiposity and how to empower people. Um, I've given business talks to physicians. I love it all. Um, And I had an hour before and I was like, well, I could either like tinker with my slides and pretend that I'm somewhat improving my talk or... I can get this podcast done and recognize that done is better than perfection. And that's really one of my personal um, growth areas for the new year is um, letting go of perfection and just really, you know, still wanting to strive for excellence, but uh, getting over that everything needs to be perfect mentality uh, because that really keeps you stuck. So um, that's just where I'm at. And I wanted to share that. Okay. So that actually is a nice segue into my first point. So if you've fallen off the wagon and let me just actually back up for a second, let's define what it means to fall off the wagon. Most people will define that as you had an overeating episode. You went off of your quote diet, which I don't like that word. You know that, Um, but you, you know, you were doing well for a time. You were following a, a certain eating plan. Maybe you were going to the gym. You were getting outside for your walks, whatever it is that you're aiming to do in your health behaviors. And then for whatever reason, you stopped doing them. And usually falling off the wagon means it's really hard to get back on the wagon or like restart doing those health behaviors. So that is what I'm referring to today. So, um, it's, uh, falling off the wagon can be an overeating episode. It can be a series of overeating episodes or just like not making great choices. It can be that you stopped working out. It can be that the scale went up and you're feeling discouraged by that, whatever it is for you. So the first principle that I want to teach you is that there is no wagon. It is a complete myth. I don't know where that came from exactly, but there is no wagon. The idea of the wagon stems from this idea that your health journey is supposed to be perfect. So it's supposed to look one way all the time. And when it doesn't look like that, that's where you've fallen off the wagon. And a lot of the clients I encounter have this all or nothing mentality, right? They've learned through dieting, because this is what commercial dieting um, sets you up for, that you're either following this rule set of rules that keep you in this very closed box and you're you're doing well when you're functioning in that box and then the second you find yourself outside of this box of rules that you have set up for yourself you have no idea what to do and it's a total disaster right that's the all or nothing mentality you're either all in and things are going great and you're feeling good or you're you're like outside of that and you're all out and you think you've failed and that's just not the reality of life right life is sometimes amazing, sometimes really challenging. It is sometimes happy. It's sometimes full of suffering. And that is, that is just what human life is about. And it has lots of imperfection in it. It has lots of up and downs, ups and downs in it. And if we don't know how to navigate all of that, we're going to be, that's where we start quitting and thinking that there's a problem. There is no problem when you eat off of your plan. When you eat off your plan one time, or even two times, or even three times, 
it's not a problem until you tell yourself it's a problem and you can't get back to what you were doing before and back to what's working back to taking care of yourself. As soon as you make it mean you've failed because you are off the wagon and you can't do this. And there you go again. And you bring in all the mental drama about, you know, how you failed so many times before. And this is just another example of how you can't stick to your health goals. That is when you make it a problem, right? So if we can let go of the idea that there is any wagon at all, and just recognize that sometimes you might be, you know, more closely following your eating plan. Sometimes you're straying a little further, but you're just going to gently rein yourself back, whatever that looks like for you. Um, we're going to do a lot better. So number one, there's no wagon drop the all or nothing mentality. And that is such a huge one. I, I cannot even stress how important it is to recognize when you have that. And that it's not serving you because I see it in so many of my clients who have a history of dieting, the all or nothing mentality. Okay. Number one, uh, no wagon. Number two is to drop the guilt and self-judgment. What tends to happen, let's use, uh, like eating off of your plan as the example. What tends to happen is you, you know, have a binge episode, you go crazy at Christmas dinner and you have, you know, dessert. And then the next day there's dessert left over in the fridge and you eat that again. And the next day you're finishing up dessert again. And then, you know, next thing you know, and it's been a week and you're like eating all this food that you didn't plan on. What tends to happen with that is then people start to beat themselves up. I'm so disappointed with myself. How could I do that? Why don't I have any willpower? Right. Here's the thing. When you ask yourself those types of questions, when you ask yourself, why don't I have any willpower? why do I keep failing at this? Then your brain is now set to answer those questions. So your brain's now going to be coming up with all the reasons why you don't have any willpower and why you keep failing and giving you all the evidence of why you're failing and how you have no willpower and how you did this last year as well. And you promised yourself you wouldn't and look at how you've done it again. Right? So you're training your brain to just answer terrible questions about yourself. And the only conclusion that comes from that is that you're a bad person, that you can't do it and you will always fail. Right? So that that's not helpful. It is not helpful to come to that conclusion because how does that move you forward? Right. That really what we're doing when we heap on the self-judgment and tell ourselves stories about how we're so disappointed with ourselves is we just tear ourselves down further. We completely disempower ourselves. We discourage ourselves. And those are the very opposite of what you need to keep going and, and moving forward with your life. Right. So Dropping the guilt and the self-judgment is so important. And I think it's really important to realize that the reason most people indulge in guilt and self-judgment is because it feels productive. It feels like, so what I've heard from people is if they don't do that, they're letting themselves off the hook, right? They're letting themselves get away with this. And they're, you know, they're letting themselves be not in alignment with their values, less than who they want to be. And so they don't want to do that. They think that that's like, they're, they're giving themselves a free pass kind of thing. And I'm not proposing that. Okay. I am going to, the next point I'm going to talk about is how we can move forward from our failures. But what I am saying is that you're going to be more successful at moving forward from your failures when you're not creating a whole lot of negative emotion for yourself. Okay. So I want to share with you what one of my clients said about this, because this, I think many of you will relate to. So she says in the past, what I've done is think, oh, well, today's a really bad eating day. I've already effed it up. I might as well keep going. But now I think, okay, hold on. I'm going to stop now. I'm able to be more forward thinking and recognize I have some decisions to make. So what we train our clients to do is to anticipate that number one, failure is a part of this journey. You will not go through your health journey or weight loss without having some failure. It's the same thing as anything in life. Like for me as an entrepreneur, and I, you know, I'm in this journey of like business and growth and my personal mindset, I have to anticipate that I'm going to fail at some things and be okay with that. Because if you feel fear failure, you're going to be paralyzed and you're not going to move forward. So if you can recognize that failure is a part of the journey of success, it's not the opposite of success. It's just a part of that growth. You're going to do yourself a favor. So what we like to call it, or what I like to call it is the concept of failing forward. If you can recognize that number one, failure is normal. And number two, that failure is an opportunity to grow. Then you will always be using those failures to your advantage to move forward. 
Okay. One of my favorite quotes by Herb Goldberg, who was um, an American author, is this. I have never seen a person grow or change in a self-constructed, meaningful way when motivated by guilt, shame, or self-hate. How true is that, right? People do not become better when we beat them down. And it's, it's really interesting because I think a lot of the big companies understand this concept, right? Like you think about the companies that are known to have a really great work culture. I like, I think of Google, when I think of that, I think of Spotify and they create an environment where, um, you know, it, it's just like a safe environment where people are able to, to fail, to try new things, right? That's the only way a company can foster innovation is if they empower their employees to be willing to take chances and fail. So that's the same thing with your health journey, with weight loss, you need to understand that there are going to be times that you're going to overeat. There's going to be times that the scale is going to go up instead of down. And if you can drop the guilt and shame about that, you are going to be much more equipped to move forward. Okay. So number two is drop the shame and guilt. Number three is ask yourself what you can learn. So this is the failing forward part that I'm talking about. Instead of all the questions about why I'm such a failure and why I'm such a disappointment and why can't I ever do this? If you can ask yourself better questions like, okay, well, what got in the way? So what happened here? I set out a goal that I was going to work out three times this week and I didn't do it at all. What happened? Okay. Let's just sit down and go over each episode. Well, you know, on Tuesday I said I was going to work out, but I didn't really set a time for it. And then I just kept saying I would do it later. And then I had to pick up my kids and then we got home late and then dinner happened. And then I was exhausted and it just didn't happen. Right. So that would be a really good example to be able to break it down and say, okay, well, firstly, did I set myself up for success by not having a specific time set out for my workout? Probably not. Right. If you do not pre plan your workout, if you do not pre plan your food choices, you're leaving it up to crossing your fingers and hoping that your willpower is going to kick in. Not a good strategy. So, planning in advance, asking yourself, okay, so how can I set myself up to succeed this week? All right. Well, I know my most opportune time is going to be right after I drop the kids off for school. So, I'm going to put on my workout gear as soon as I drop them off. That is my me time to work out. I'm just giving you an example, obviously. But the idea is you're planning in advance. You're asking yourself how you su can succeed better. I'll give you my own example. So for the longest time, um, like through the pandemic pandemic in the past two years, my husband and I were pretty good about on weekends, we pack all three kids into strollers and, you know, we have a double stroller. We have a single, single stroller. We get them their snacks and we would go for family runs where we'd run three kilometers to a park. They get to play. We run three kilometers back and that's our workout. And we loved it. And it was great, but, um, neither of us was doing any strength training and I, and both of us really value feeling strong, building muscle, maintaining muscle. And we have, I will be honest, we have a beautiful gym in our basement. It has everything, has all the equipment. We have it really like decked out. It's great. We could go at any point. So we tried doing the Peloton app and we did like, you know, two workouts. It just, it just was not happening. And I could easily be like down on myself for like, I know better. I tell people this all the time. I am, you know, a health coach. I'm a physician. I'm, you know, I should be doing better for myself, but instead, so firstly, that would not be helpful, right? <laughs> what would that accomplish except making me feel bad and then not motivating me to do anything. So instead we can, my husband and I sat down and we're like, okay, like what's going to make this happen? doing exercise classes at a gym doesn't work for us because we have three kids and we want to like, they are awake at five 45 in the morning. So for us to leave the house in the morning together for an exercise class doesn't work. So we had to figure out what worked for us. So we hired an awesome personal trainer, Pam, coach Pam, shout out to her. Um, and she comes to our house two to three days a week at six o'clock in the morning. And all of our kids come downstairs. They all love her. They hang, hang out with us in the gym or they play in their play area and we work out and she makes us work out and she is our accountability to do it. And it gets done. And it's the best investment decision that we have made for our personal health over the past year and a half, because yeah, we could have just, you know, kept on trying to do it on our own, but that wasn't working for us. And so when we asked ourselves, how can we set ourselves up for success? That was what we came up with and it's worked amazingly well. And that is how we've moved forward from that. So, you know, we, we were quote unquote failing in kind of keeping up with our, our weight training for a while, actually. Um, 
And then we, but we asked ourselves better questions. How could we set ourselves up for success? And that's what, that's what worked. Thomas Edison, inventor of the light bulb, right? The guy who's well known for having quote, failed a thousand times, but the way he frames it is I didn't fail a thousand times. The light bulb was, I think he says, um, a process of a thousand steps, right? So he says, I failed my way to success. You have to be willing to fail your way to success when it's when it comes to weight loss or your health also, meaning you have to recognize that there's going to be days where you binge and you go to the fridge and you eat everything in sight and you're like, not a good decision. Okay, so what happened? Oh, you know what? I was really stressed and I did not take the time to process that emotion. I didn't sit down and journal and think about what was going on for me. I just, I just went into autopilot and I ate. Okay, so then how can you learn from that for the next time? If you can always take those quote failures as an opportunity to analyze objectively and with curiosity and self-compassion, then you are using those failures as an opportunity to continue your growth and your learning and your evolution. And the last one is um, step number four is to look forward realistically. So this is the prime example. When we are setting um, movement or physical activity goals, Oftentimes we're, we're working with people who have been completely sedentary, right? And so they, you know, will set these goals of like, I'm going to work out four days a week, right? And we're like, wow, like, let's just slow down there. So going from zero to four is a pretty big jump, right? And what happens is there's seven days in a week. And if you set the goal for four days and then you're three days into the week or four days into the week, it's like, well, I've already blown it because I can't get my four days in. So I guess I'll start again next week, right? That's what happens when we set two aggressive goals is they just create an opportunity for us to like fail and then feel discouraged. So setting smaller goals, if you're struggling to kind of accomplish the goals that you set out for yourself, it's probably because they're just too big. So cut them in half and cut them in half again and set these tiny little goals. For some, it could be as simple as I'm going to drink eight glasses of water today. Right. And you could look at that and be like, okay, that's not going to lead to weight loss. Like, what is that accomplishing? You know, th that's not worth anything. That's not good enough. And you could tear down that goal or you could do it, celebrate that and build confidence that you can follow through on your goals and then add to it. That's going to lead you forward in a much better way. If we can all focus on 1% increments of growth and personal evolution, imagine where you'll be at the end of a year. If you would accept that 1% growth each day is an amazing thing, instead of tearing that down and expecting these like huge leaps where your whole life changes overnight, break down your goals into little simple manageable steps. Most people know about the SMART smart goals formula, specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and timely, right? So if you don't know what that is, look it up, but set really realistic, doable goals that you're hundred percent confident you can complete so that you can build your confidence and then add to that. That's going to be way better than setting really big goals and then quitting. Because the only thing that guarantees failure is quitting. And that is what happens so often, right? We get discouraged and we're like, what's the point of this? Might as well quit. And somehow that that's going to speed things up, right? Quitting never speeds things up. Quitting is the only way to ensure that you fail. If you never quit, then you don't fail. You just keep on moving forward towards your success. All right. I hope that was helpful Four tips to, for what to do when you've fallen off the wagon. Number one, there's no wagon. Number two, drop the guilt and the self-judgment. Number three, fail forward. Ask yourself what you can learn and how you can set yourself up for success. And then number four is look forward realistically, set smaller goals so you can build your confidence. Okay, everyone. I hope this was really helpful for you. Please share this with a friend. This is what I want you to do. Take a screenshot post it to your social media, tag me at Sasha High MD, share this with your friends so that we can all just keep going 1% increments of growth and evolution to be the, just the best version of ourselves. All right, everyone. I'll see you again next week. Bye.